Welcome back to the final segment on today's program here on the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Ray Guo. Doris, we're going to start talking about the people in Taiwan because we already talked about your experiences as an English teacher and also the food in Taiwan. How about the people? What was your first impression and what was the, you know, uh, uh, some of the traits or characteristics that you remember you know, that you, you're mostly fond of about the people in Taiwan? Well, I think that's the best part of Taiwan is the people. Is the people. Because there is beautiful scenery all over the world. Yes. But beautiful people are people who are friendly. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've always appreciated about the people in Taiwan is that they work very hard. Mm. They want to do a good job. Yes. And, you know, in some countries they don't really care. No. But here we really care. Yeah, Taiwanese and so have you, that you drive. You want to help people because yes. they care. Mm -hmm. And I think the people here are, are really very uh, industrious mm -hmm. and they're very grateful when you help them. They're yes. very kind and friendly. Mm -hmm. And all my friends who come here say, oh, the people of Taiwan are so friendly. Yes. And they love it here. They all kind of want to stay. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes Times we will come across a story like you know a few weeks ago, uh, a couple from Europe who were supposedly be going back after a short stay in Taiwan and going back home to get married, but because of what happened with the volcano in Iceland, they were stuck in Taiwan and they missed their wedding date, and then instead our hotel operator where they were staying offered and arranged a wedding for them in Taiwan. And these people said, you know, in front of the Taiwan media, that they will never forget mostly the people of Taiwan and their love and passion for foreign visitors. I certainly think that's very true in your experience in Taiwan as well. Yes. Yes, that's okay. very true. And, yeah. and we want to thank the people for their kindness to foreigners. Yes. And I think that's a very important characteristic for us is to... Mm to give more than we receive, mm. because it's, you get more blessings from giving than of receiving. Course. And Taiwan has been doing mm. this, yeah. and people love Taiwan because it's so friendly. Yeah, it just like the Chinese you know, uh, character, She De, you have to give first before you receive. That's right. Yes, and Doris, over the last 60 years that you were in Taiwan, you know, what have you been noticed as you know, some of the changes that are taking place on the island? You know, not just in terms of the economy, but also, you know, I mean, the environment. You know, I mean, back in the 60s, maybe we put too much emphasis on economic development. And we didn't pay enough attention on the protection of, you know, where we are, of, of the world, of the globe. But, you know, certainly these concepts are, you know, changing. And certainly you've, you know, seen a lot of it, you know, over the past 60 years. Can you share some of it with us? Yes, I've noticed that Taiwan has, it was always beautiful, but as you say, as things are developing into an industrial society, mm -hmm. sometimes things get polluted. Yes. But Taiwan has been very quick to see this and mm -hmm. to try to clean up some of mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. And you can take the cities, like Taipei City, it's entirely a different place. And mm -hmm. there's parks and places for people to bicycle. Mm -hmm. And also we've been trying to clean up the, uh, the waste from the factories and the rivers. Mm -hmm. So I think Taiwan has been a good example. Yes. But Taiwan is been very quick to take on new ideas and uh, I think it's been developing because of the readiness of the people to mm -hmm. accept new things. Yes, and also the fact is sometimes we will you know, learn a new concept and we somehow absorb it and digest it and we come up with another idea that's even better than the original. I that's think that's true. Yeah, that's the very edge. innovative here. In yes, Taiwan. Uh, that's innovative. the niche that Taiwanese mm -hmm. have, and also the fact is, you know, Doris, uh, we know that uh, you, being a teacher of English in Taiwan for many years, do you think that today Taiwan, because of the increase or enhanced level of English proficiency, that we're now more internationalized? We are definitely more internationalized than okay. we were before. Mm -hmm. And not only just in the language, but in the way we think and the way we do things. Okay. And the citizens, I think, themselves are mm -hmm. part, they're willing to be part of the global village mm -hmm. and take on some of the things that they need mm -hmm. to mix with other people. Okay. And I think that's great. Yeah. We also know that you recently came out with a book called A Friend for Life. And uh, in the book, you share many stories and experiences that you've had in Taiwan over the last 60 plus years. Can you share some of them with us today on the program? 
Well, I think some of the things in the book are some of my friends wanted to put in the book are some things that I have talked to other people about. Like the thing is that that we also have to be, uh, let's say, that we want to not blame other people when things happen, that we want to cooperate and help each other. Mm -hmm. And also, I think some of the lessons that, that we've all learned are to forgive other people and mm -hmm. to go on and, okay. and to strive for the best. Mm -hmm. I think we all need to be excellent, but not perfect. No. Sometimes we can't accept ourselves because we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. But we need to learn that excellence is more important than being perfect. So mm -hmm. those are just a few things I shared in the book. Okay. And uh, what do you think, looking back, in the 60 years that you've you know, been in Taiwan, what would you think some of the things that really made you stay here memorable and worthwhile? Was it you know, your experience as an English teacher or was it your, your, your role as a teacher per se, period? Well, I think it has to do with the fact that because everybody here really cares and they try, okay. that I feel like it's worthwhile trying okay. to help. And we're learning things together. Yes. And of course, when you teach things, you're also learning. Mm. So we're growing together and learning things. Yes. And because of that, I like to try to help when I can to be part of mm -hmm. helping the government agencies mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. things and, mm -hmm. and to help in the Research Development Committee and things oh. like that. Because okay. I think it's very important for us to work together with people of other nationalities. And I'm yes. glad I can have a small part in being a part in helping Taiwan grow mm -hmm. to be international and well-known all over the world for the wonderful country that it is. Okay. Well, Doris, you're certainly being too modest. I think uh, you, know, you mentioned earlier about uh, the, the fact that you also have a branch office now in China, in Beijing, and you've also been teaching you know, English there in China. And uh, do you see some similarities or parallels? between China today and maybe 40, 50 years ago when you first started teaching English here in Taiwan. Do you see some parallels that maybe some of the things that you experienced you know, in Taiwan you know, back in the 60s are also taking place today in China? Oh, definitely. A lot mm. of the programs that we made in early days have gone out in the countryside where the people are learning oh, yes. over there. Yes. Some of our early TV shows that were even simpler because now the it advanced more of course and also as they grow and as they learn more develop more mm -hmm. there's a lot of things because we can speak the same language that mm -hmm. we have in commies that way okay. and I think it's it's very good that we all learn in Asia all of the countries in Asia yes. that we can grow and have our own distinctive roles but we can grow together and develop in a way that will be a help mm. to Asia because mm -hmm. Asia is where all the action is now. Yes. The whole world knows that. That's Before the... it was the Western countries. Now yes. it's Asia. So mm. we are here in exciting times and Asia is taking its role. Yeah, the gravity is tilting towards Asia. And certainly, Doris, today is the first time that I ever met you in person. Certainly seen you on TV before in your programs. Uh, and over the course of the last 40 plus minutes, I certainly sensed in my interview session with you that your energy, your passion, your desire you know, to be the best you can be and to be in the position to help other people. I, I think that's truly remarkable. I'm not just saying these things to, just to bother you up, but I think from the bottom of my heart, you know, what you represent, the qualities that you have and showing to the you know, students and people in Taiwan are truly you know, a story for many generations to learn from. And uh, can you then, towards the end of the program today, share with us and tell us a little bit about the kinds of you know, you know, uh, guidance and suggestions that you will make to the younger generations out there as they venture out into the world, into a brand new set of challenges and also opportunities you know, as they embrace life? Well, thank you for all your kind words, well, but, you know, I think all of us, we feel we want to make a mark and do something that will help other people, mm -hmm. kind of footsteps in the uh, sand that people can follow. Mm -hmm. One thing I think young people have to learn is that we have to be true to ourselves, mm -hmm. that we have to be honest, yes. we have to be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. If we're not trustworthy, then nobody will trust us for anything, whether it's business or relationships. Mm -hmm. So I think that... As, as we grow more and more here, that the young people need to realize that 
there is hope for the future, mm -hmm. and you need to have goals to follow. You cannot okay. just go. I always tell young people that we need to be what we call a thermostat, not a thermometer. Okay. Because the thermostat sets the temperature. Yes. The thermometer only measures it. Everybody's hot, That's everybody's right. cold. But if you are a thermostat, you are setting the temperature. Mm -hmm. And in Taiwan, we can do that. Mm -hmm. We can set the standard. And as individuals, we need to have a standard, we need to have a goal, and be willing to sacrifice for it and work for it. Mm -hmm. And don't get discouraged and give up, mm -hmm. And because there is hope. Have hope for the future. Yes. Finally, Doris, what's next on the agenda for Dr. Doris Brown? Well, as far as I, I'm still doing some of the same things I used to do, I'm still playing my trumpet, mm -hmm. I'm still Terrific. writing some music for Let's Talk, some mm -hmm. of those songs and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. and we all just do our little part. Okay. Now, as far as what's next, when you talk about technology, nobody knows, so no. we have to see what's being developed, then okay. we use it. Okay. But keep alert, do the best you can, don't worry about anything, just say, okay, I'll do my best, mm -hmm. and then we can just go on together. Okay. Doris, it's truly been an honor and a pleasure to have you here on the program today here on Taiwan Outlook. I certainly wish you all the best in all your professional and personal endeavors in the future. And hopefully we'll get the chance to have you back on the program. Thank you. It's been so nice to be here and to be with all of you and share. Thank you. Yeah. I want to thank you for watching our program today. I'll see you next time here on the Taiwan Outlook here on Macroview Television. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.